All right, everyone, I want to uh, welcome you tonight. My name is David Bledsoe. I'm the Senior Manager of Student Engagement and uh, Communication at the American Indian College Fund. Tonight, we're going to be talking about our Great Oak Future Leaders Scholarship, and i um, glad you all could join us uh, for this time. So I'm going to share my presentation right now and talk to you a little bit about how this works. So uh, one of the tools we're going to use for this uh, event is called Mentimeter. Um, if you look at the top of your screen there, you'll see a code where you can go to menti.com. You can actually interact with some of the slides and, and also ask questions through that. I will bring it up to the full screen here. You can also scan. If you want to use your phone for this, you can scan your phone with the QR code. Uh, all you have to do is go to menti.com and then enter this code and you'll be able to answer questions, to ask questions, and to participate in our event tonight. So that code is 86516249. And uh, one of our staffers, uh, Ben, will be putting in the menti.com and that code. So you guys can just click on the link if you want to as well too. So all you have to do is scan that QR code or go to menti.com and you'll be able to participate. So. Let's get started. Now, our, our presentation part is going to be less than 30 minutes. Just want to let you know, it's not going to be a huge amount of time, uh, but we'll leave lots of time at the end of, of our discussion for questions from you. So throughout this time, as you're looking at the presentation, feel free to type in your questions at any time into the chat, uh, into the Zoom chat. And then we'll also have a special Q&A uh, uh, slide at the end where you can enter questions into the menti.com uh, feature as well too. So let me go ahead and uh, get us started. So uh, if you aren't familiar with our organization, American Indian College Fund uh, is a national Native American scholarship organization. Uh, we've been serving Native students and institutions for more than 30 years. And uh, the, the Great Oak Future Leader Scholarship is actually a new scholarship uh, that we've offered just within the last couple of years, but it has a, a very large amount of funding. And uh, if you look at kind of some of our awards from the previous cycle, we actually awarded more than $9 million to almost 4,000 Native students. Uh, and a lot of that actually went to California tribal members who applied for this new scholarship. And I had some great news uh, this past week, which we learned we got even more funding for the scholarship. So there is plenty of money uh, to, to award anyone who's interested and qualifies and, and uh, is awarded. So be sure to know that there are pl plenty of opportunities for you uh, with this particular scholarship. Now we're gonna start off talking specifically about this opportunity. The College Fund offers a few other opportunities, but let's just talk about some of the basics here. So. The application uh, for this scholarship actually opened in February, opened February 1st, and that is for the next school year. So that is for 2022-2023. The application deadline is May 31st. So you have until May 31st to apply for this particular opportunity. And the best place to go to learn more about it and to apply is collegefund.org forward slash California. Now, this is a, one of the places that you can participate. Um, if you go into Mentee, what, I wanted to ask you, what types of degrees can you get scholarship funding for with this particular scholarship? Do, do any of you know? How many of you think undergrad? Can you get vocational? Can you get graduate? What are, what are your thoughts about what types of degrees you can get funding for with this? I'll give you guys a few minutes. See, a lot of people say undergrad. One says graduate. A zero for vocational. So I got a few coming in. It looks like most people think it's undergrad. So, but I've got some really good news, <laughs> which is that you can actually get funding for any of those types of degrees or certificates, as long as you're attending a, um, uh, a, a nonprofit accredited institution anywhere in the United States. It doesn't even have to be in California. And there's up to $20,000 available per year for you to attend these institutions. Now, obviously, that's on a scale with 
you know, vocational or, or uh, technical certificates, it would be only about $5,000. But for undergraduate and degree programs, you're looking at ten dollars to $20,000 a year per student per year. Uh, and many of our students who have received this have received the scholarship for several years running. So this is really a fantastic opportunity to get funding for school. Now, here's another question for you. What is the elig eligibility requirement for this scholarship? So the options are you must be an enrolled tribal member, uh, you must have a 3.0 GPA, or you must attend a tribal college. Which of those do you think that it is? So got three options. This is for eligibility for our Great Oak Future Leader Scholarship. So, oh, you got, you got a few people saying, well, tribal member. Most people are still on GPA 3.0. A few said must attend a tribal college. So you're doing pretty good, but let me kind of go over some of those eligibility requirements right now. So there's some specific ones for this opportunity. One that you must be a US citizen. Now for this opportunity, you must be an enrolled member of an eligible tribe. And with this particular opportunity, it is not, it is not available to all California tribes. Uh, of the California tribes that are available, it's for most of them. And we'll go over that in the next slide as well. You actually only need to have a 2.0 GPA to apply for this particular scholarship. You must be a full-time student. And then one thing I do wanna highlight is you do not have to demonstrate financial need. So you don't have to um, you know, fill out the FAFSA or, or show that information, although we do collect that information if you're interested in sharing it, but there is no demonstrated financial need that is necessary to apply for the scholarship. So these are the only eligibility requirements for this particular scholarship. Now, let me talk to you about who is eligible for this. Now, this is based on a state revenue compact with the state of California. And so more than 70 tribes of the 109 that are recognized in the state are eligible to apply. And if you go to that main uh, scholarship page, that collegefund.org forward slash California, you can see a list of every single eligible tribe that is on there. We work with all those tribes, sending them information about the scholarships, their education departments, and their tribal governments, as well as a lot of other community organizations. So. And you should be able to get good information about eligibility and who, uh, who is eligible for that. So if you go to that collegefund.org forward slash California, you'll be able to see that right there. So I actually wanna share a video that we, um, that we produced at the end of last year with one of our, our uh, scholarship recipients. So I'm gonna to try to play that right now. I'm gonna make sure that you guys can hear me. Okay, and let's try to play that now. At some point within our family's history, we we weren't given the choice of where we where or who we wanted to be. You know, in my short life, I had been told by people by non-Indians, my brother and I both, that you know, our culture is inferior and it's less than, and we shouldn't you know practice it. The educational journey has just changed a lot about um, the way that. I can see and interpret the world and um, it's allowed me to, I feel like, really be myself. Just being surrounded by amazing um, Native scholars at my school and amazing mentors and all these people have just taught me that I was having to work, you know, as well as go to school and that's very difficult because there are times, you know, when you have to give up studying for you know, hours so that you can make money to like pay rent and stuff. I got a huge scholarship that made my life so much less stressful because I didn't have to worry about, you know, reaching a certain number of hours to pay my rent or pay for, you know, gas and the stuff that I need day to day. It's wonderful to have our students come back home. Example is Tori to come back to help the tribe uh, with, with employment. Um, and to be part of the next generation. The Iraq tribal students have received a, a high amount of award from, from the college fund, greatly appreciated. And 
and, and proud that our, that our students are being proactive in getting that, um, being able to continue their education. Now is, a, now is the time to empower yourself, uplift yourself, uh, to help one and the other each other through our educational system. All right, well, that was Tori. Uh, she was one of our scholars from last year. She's actually graduated now. She's, she's actually working for the Yurok tribe, uh, but there are a lot of different students that got that funding. And as you saw, we've, we've distributed more than $3 million just for this one program in the last two years. Like I said, we got great news that there's more funding now. But I wanna go ahead and turn this over to our new scholarships manager, Juan Ruiz. He uh, and his team uh, in our scholarships department are the ones that help you with applications, help to uh, review the awards, and of course, award all of those funds to kind of make your education um, journey possible. So I'm gonna turn it over to Juan, uh, and he's going to kind of start from here on what some of the mechanics are of actually applying for our scholarship. So Juan, take it over. Thank you. Thanks everyone, for the introduction and uh, good evening, everybody. I hope uh, you're having a good night so far and a good week so far. Uh, I'm excited to be spending some time with you this afternoon and I'm grateful that you're here with us. Um, for the next couple of minutes, I'm gonna be walking you through the mechanics of the application like David said. So let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, I'm excited to share with all of you that this year we have revamped our application experience. So we've made it even easier for you to complete the application. You can find the link to the application portal when you go to the link uh, collegefund.org forward slash California. And that's going to reroute you to this portal. On here, in order to be, um, to be able to access the application, you'll have to make a new account by clicking on the sign up button below the login button. Making a new account requires you provide an email address and a password. Once you have created the account, you'll come back to this screen and you'll be able to log on in to the portal. And the portal is going to collect a couple of different pieces of information for you from you that I will then review to determine your eligibility uh, for uh, or scholarship opportunities. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, in addition to collecting, you know, the typical um, demographic data, so your name, your email address, your phone number, uh, the school that you attend, and different things like that, the application is going to require that you answer some prompt questions, some short reflection questions. Uh, this is a great opportunity for you to tell us more about yourself and who you are. There are three to five different application questions, and they are a chance for you to tell us a unique, your unique story and your unique goals. Uh, this is a time for you to really think about what makes you different, uh, why it is that you're going to college, why it is that is meaningful to you and your community. Think about answering questions clearly and concisely. As you're answering those questions, I want you to think about the question on the prompt. And once you've written out your answer, read it back and make sure that your response is answering that question. I encourage you to use descriptive language that you think about how your ideas flow and uh, you think or, or try to incorporate uh, how you want to incorporate your education in your, um, in your um, post-graduation goals. Um, I would encourage you to have your friends, your family, uh, your teachers, uh, your professors read over your essay responses to make sure that they are error-free and that your ideas flow concisely and that you're happy with your responses. Um, like I said, there are three major questions uh, in the application. The first question is, what challenges have you overcome to attend college? This is a good opportunity to think about your journey and your own, per, uh, your own personal history. The second question is, what are your educational and career goals? And how will this scholarship help you achieve them? Think about where it is that you're at, where it is that you're at right now, and where are you going over the next couple of years? And how do you want to utilize your education uh, to, to make an impact? The last question is how will you use your education to impact your native nation or Indian country? This is a critical question for you to think about how you want to contribute back to the Native American community. Let's go to the next slide. 
Um, part of the application requires that you, um, you know, review your eligibility and different things like that. As you're thinking about your eligibility, some questions might come up. So we have two great resources in our website for you to explore and prepare for the application. Um, you can find both of these links when you go to collegefund.org forward slash California. The first link is the, uh, the scholarships FAQs. On here, you're going to find a series of commonly asked questions and answers that folks um, give us every year. So um, you're going to find responses or answers to questions like, am I eligible to apply? What kind of school do I have to attend? How do I prove uh, my tribal enrollment or that I am a descendant? Different questions like that are going to be answered in that link. Secondly, if you go to the application tips, you're going to find uh, a wealth of information on how you can craft strong um, essay responses and how you can put together a strong application. I encourage you to review both of these things before you begin your application experience. So let's talk about the full circle eligibility program. So uh, to be eligible, you do have to meet a couple of different criteria points. The first one is that you have to be a US citizen. Um, you have to be an enrolled member or a descendant of one of the, uh, the of any federal or state tribe. Um, and to be eligible for the opportunity in California, you have to be uh, enrolled or a descendant of one of those tribes that uh, David mentioned earlier. You have to plan to be a full-time enrolled student in the fall and have a, uh, a cumulative GPA of at least 2.0. So a cumulative GPA is all of your GPAs averaged over time. And if you're not sure what your cumulative GPA is, you can contact uh, your academic counselor right now. And you have to plan to be a full-time student in the fall. So if you are currently in college and you're part-time this semester, or if you're a high school student, um, either of those two is okay. You just have to plan to be a full-time enrolled student. And we will verify that you are enrolled full-time in the fall. So keep that in mind. Lastly, like David uh, mentioned earlier, you don't have to demonstrate financial need. This is a great opportunity for you to stack different types of financial aid and um, acquire the most amount of money for college uh, and minimize the debt that you have to take on. We encourage all applicants to also submit the FAFSA, but we do not um, base our, our decisions based on your financial need. And there is even more money available to students that attend a tribal college. Tribal education is an amazing opportunity for students to get a, uh, a, an, an indigenous driven um, higher education experience. Um, tribal education, tribal colleges are accredited, accredited institutions that offer vocational, bachelor's and graduate degrees. They um, offer classes focused and infused with tribal knowledge and familiar student support. So um, while you may be in California, there are tribal colleges outside of the state. So if you want to explore those, you can go to our website and you can learn more about those opportunities there as well. Well, thank you very much, Juan. I appreciate all that. And of course, we have some great scholarships, but we do you think that we offer more than scholarships to Native students? Does anybody have an answer? Do you think that, you know, yes, we do, no, we don't, or are you just tired of this? You want to get to, your, uh, to the end of this presentation. Uh, of course, we offer more than just scholarships to the students that we serve, and especially the institutions that we're working with. So I wanna go over some of those real quick. We're almost at the end of our presentation. So some of the student supports that we offer are, uh, many of our scholarships include coaching, support, and other resources for the students who uh, are awarded. Uh, sometimes that can include internship placement and career planning resources or other um, opportunities. Conferences and event opportunities, some of those are included with our scholarships as well. And of course, anyone who uh, is awarded a college fund scholarship can also apply to be a part of our student ambassador program. Uh, just like you saw with Tori, uh, she was one of our great um, Great Oak Future Leaders scholars, and she became a student ambassador, as well as we had several other representatives from, from this program in California. So that is something you could also be involved with if you're awarded. Now, a couple other opportunities that we have, which these can really connect you with other resources. So 
we do two monthly newsletters. Uh, one is specifically about scholarships, and it's not just scholarships we offer. It's all sorts of scholarships, uh, scholarships for Native students, for minority or BIPOC students, uh, and, in, and scholarships in specific areas as well, too. If you sign up, if you go to collegefund.org forward slash stay connected, and uh, Ben will put that into the chat, you can sign up for these newsletters. And this will provide you basically opportunities every single month. It will tell you when deadlines are coming up and keep you abreast of any specific dates that are coming up, of course, like May 31st, when our scholarship application is due. We also share a lot of that same information plus more on our social media channels. And we offer a lot of events uh, like this one, maybe not specifically about scholarships, maybe it's about you know, how to transfer, Maybe it's about how to get an internship, how to apply, all sorts of things. If you go to collegefund.org forward slash Native Pathways, you can get connected with a lot of those different resources. Or if you follow us on our social media channels, we're always available at Native Pathways, and that is on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and then also on TikTok now. One thing I do want to share with you, other than, again, repeating our deadline date and the, the uh, the website is we do have an event next week specifically about the application. We haven't had a lot of time on this event tonight to go over what makes a successful application, but we're going to have a couple of our scholarship, our scholarship readers and successful scholars sharing with you next week how they were successful and what they're looking for in their, their specific award applications. So that's an event that you can attend. And that's just an, an example of some of the other events that are available. And of course, there's a lot more resources on the collegefund.org forward slash Native Pathways. So we are to the end of our presentation time, which is great. You can all get excited. And I want to talk with you about this specific uh, incentive that we're offering for you guys that are here on our call tonight. So we are basically offering you a $20 gift card if you apply for the Great Oak Future Leader Scholarship Program. So how can you, how can you uh, become eligible for that? So the first thing you need to do is either after this or, or uh, during this call, you can fill out an online survey. And uh, Ben, our staff member, is going to put this link into the chat so you guys can just click on it. But all you have to do is go to the Survey Monkey link. It's just a, a feedback survey about uh, this specific event and if this event the information was useful but all you have to do is give your name and address at the end of that survey and as long as you complete an application by march 30th i'm going to give you until the end of this month we will send you one of those 20 dollars gift cards so that's any of you who apply after coming to this event uh, and you fill out that survey we'll send you a 20 dollars gift card that's all you need to do you don't need to get awarded. You don't need to <laughs> meet all those eligibility requirements other than just be able to apply for the Great Oak Future Leader Scholar Program. So if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us uh, at, our, at that uh, email that was listed before, which was scholarships at collegefund.org. But I want us to have plenty of time to go over your questions now. So I'm going to get us to the next slide, and we'll, we'll go back to that survey again. But at this point, uh, both Juan and I will answer some of your questions. So you can put your question into Mentimeter here. Plus, we'll also be going through the chat, uh, pulling questions out from there and answering your questions. So I, since Juan's had a little bit more time to look through the chat, I'm going to let him get started with answering uh, one of the questions that you guys have put in there. So. So let me uh, let us know um, what questions you have. Either put it into Mentimeter or into the chat, and we'll continue to answer those questions for the rest of the time. Don't feel like you need to stay around if you don't want to, but we want to answer your questions as much as possible. So go ahead, Juan. Thanks, David. So I actually haven't seen too many questions on the chat, but I wanted to throw out one more resource uh, for folks here on the call tonight. Uh, tomorrow at 3 p.m., uh, so 2 p.m. California time, I'm going to be on Zoom live helping people complete their application. So if you're free, to free tomorrow, you can join me on Zoom and I can help you complete that application so we can fast track you into getting your application submitted 
and uh, get in that $20 gift card that uh, David mentioned. So um, I just put the, the, the link for the registration for tomorrow's uh, conversation um, on the chat right there. So if you wanna go ahead and sign up for that conversation and join me tomorrow at two o'clock California time, uh, I can work one-on-one -on -one with you and help you complete the application, answer any questions that you have. And I will even proofread your questions, your responses, if you have those ready to make sure that you put together a strong application. Um, the average amount, so we have a question here and it reads, can you repeat the award amounts based on the degree type? Um, let me see if I can find those amounts. David, do you happen to, to know yeah, that? Yeah, for, uh, for the, the lowest level, so it's up to $20,000. $20,000 would be the highest level. That would be for graduate students. Mm -hmm. For those that are seeking graduate degrees, going to law school, going to medical school, getting a master's, those would be what you would get the highest dollar amount for. Um, for undergraduate, it's going to be between 10 and 15, depending on what type of school you go to. I don't know exactly what the, the divisions are. I think it has to do with whether it's a private or a state school. And then for vocational or technical programs, it is $5,000 a year, and that's for each year. So if you apply and are eligible, um, there's no reason that you can't receive that um, uh, that award for multiple years, as long as you apply every year. Yeah, thanks for reminding me of those amounts. So when David says per year, that means we break it up into two halves. You get the first half in the fall, the second half in the spring. So keep that in mind. Um, I wanna go ahead and take a question from Danny. And he's asking uh, if we confirm eligibility relying on tribal enrollment and not current residency. So yes, so tribal enrollment, we are asking that you provide your tribal enrollment card, or if you have a certificate of Indian blood, that we can also accept that. Um, if you are not a tribal enrolled member, but you are a descendant of one, you will have to provide your birth certificate and the tribal enrollment card of that person that you are a descendant of. So let's say, for example, that you're not a tribal enrolled member, but your parent is, your, your mom or your dad is. Uh, then you can provide your birth certificate that indicates your name and your parents name and their travel enrollment card and we'll just make that match and we'll bridge that that way. Um, you do not have to currently live or reside in uh, uh, a Native American reservation or in Indian country to be eligible. So that's a great question. Thank you for that. Uh, and one thing I wanted to point out too, Juan covered uh, our other scholarship programs. But one of the reasons we mentioned that was if for some reason you are not a member of one of those um, 70 plus eligible tribes in California, you can still apply for all of our other scholarships. And that's that full circle scholarship program. Now with the Great Oak Future Leader Scholar, you do have to be an enrolled member of one of those eligible tribes. However, if you are a member of any other state or federally, federally recognized tribe, you can apply for our full circle scholarship programs. And that is a very large number of programs, almost a hundred different scholarship programs fall within that one application. And for that, you only have to be either an enrolled member of one of the um, state or federal, federally recognized tribes in the United States, but you can also be a descendant. So with that program, if you're not an enrolled member uh, and your parent or grandparent is an enrolled member, you can still uh, how you can still get your eligibility through that method. Uh, and then of course, uh, Juan also mentioned our tribal college scholarships. We do work with 35 accredited schools throughout Indian country. And there are additional scholarship opportunities available for those schools as well too. And there are really some fantastic schools. Of um, the people that you heard about um, that or we saw pictures of earlier, some of our tribal scholars from last year went, they went to, some of them went to Northwest Indian College, which is in Bellingham, Washington. Um, some of them went to IAI, which is um, Institute of American Indian Arts. And those are two excellent schools. Uh, and all you have to do is be uh, eligible for this scholarship. You don't have to live in California. You don't have to go to school in California. It's eligible for you to really attend any nonprofit accredited school in the United States. So um, I always say nonprofit because you know some people ask, well, can I go to University of Phoenix or can I go to, go to some of those schools? It cannot be a for-profit school. It must be a nonprofit, but most schools are nonprofit. 
And thank you for that. And so let me, I'm going to answer this next question that just popped up on the screen. But before I go there, I wanted to also let you know that we have a lot of scholarship opportunities available. You only have to submit one application. So it's super simple, really straightforward. And with that application, we'll determine what your what what opportunity you are the best fit for. So there are you only have to submit one application. There aren't multiple. So it's really straightforward. Um, so let me answer this next question that just popped up on the screen. When do we announce winners of scholarships? That's a great question. So the deadline to apply is May 31st. And we review applications and we conduct awards through the month of June and part of July. And we typically send award notifications at the end of July or early on in August. So it's really, really important that you keep uh, checking your email regularly throughout the summer and that you keep your login credentials for the portal somewhere safe and somewhere where you, where you will remember them. Because if you are awarded, we'll contact you via email and we'll prompt you to go to the portal to submit some additional information so we can process your award for the upcoming fall semester. So that's a great question. And uh, so the short answer to that is we announce winners uh, toward the end of July and early on in August. So thank you for asking that. And uh, Ben, if you could put in the survey link again, we had several people asking uh, for that link uh, so they can complete the survey. Uh, and like I said, you do have until the end of the month if you wanna to try to get that $20 gift card, we really want you to apply and apply early and take advantage of like the office hours that Juan mentioned. Um, we have a really fantastic uh, scholarship support staff who can answer questions, go through your application with you. And we have a lot of those events that I mentioned, like the event next week that's specifically focusing on how to you know, create a great application and, and kind of answer the questions that our readers uh, are, are looking for. And the people that we have that read our scholarship applications, they are really some fantastic native professionals, higher ed professionals, people that know our students and who they are, uh, some of the challenges that they face. So they're really people that know uh, native students uh, and the challenges that they have. Uh, they know what their opportunities are. And so it's really great that the support that we have for this, this entire application process, but you can learn more about that at that event next week or through the, all those resources that we have on the website. One that we had up on uh, one of the slides earlier is our application walkthrough video. It's five minutes long. Uh, it takes you step-by-step step through that new platform that Juan mentioned that we're using for our application. It will tell you exactly what you need to know every step of the process to successfully complete our application. Uh, one of the things that's great that in addition to those uh, short answers, uh, those reflective questions uh, that, that Juan mentioned, we don't require any additional documentation other than just your basic eligibility. So that's a transcript. Uh, it does not have to be an official transcript. Uh, so it'd be a transcript for your high school or your current college. Uh, we would need that um, uh, tribal uh, eligibility for the Great Oak Future Scholars Program, it does need to be in your, your enrollment uh, if it's for the full circle program, and it can be descendancy as well. But outside of those things, in a, in a picture, you don't need to provide any reference letters, don't need, need to provide any proof of financial need. Those are the only things that you absolutely have to need. Of course, we want you to prepare and to do a good job with your application, but there's not a lot that we require in that application section as far as you bring the additional materials to us. Yeah. Um, I wanna go back to the chat and answer one more question that popped up from uh, one of our uh, attendees tonight. Uh, the question is, after you do the universal application, do you have a second round of eligible or eligibility application? So that's a great question. So we only require that you complete the application once and it's just the one application, it's one experience. And you can expect to spend about 45 minutes to an hour completing it. Once you complete that, if we determine that you are eligible and we award you a scholarship, we'll notify you at the end of July or early on in August. And there are no further applications that you need to complete. Before the semester begins, we are gonna request that you submit an, an unofficial copy of your transcript and a copy of your fall schedule. That process we call verification. And it's simply a process that we have to conduct to make sure that you're still enrolled in college or, uh, or at your school so that we know that when we are sending the funds that you're still there so that they can apply them to your student account. 
So, um, you know, it's really straightforward. The application is really simple. And I'm really excited about uh, the new application experience that we've created for students this year. I want to make a plug for uh, tomorrow's uh, event that I'm hosting, where I'll be meeting with folks individually, one on one on Zoom at two o'clock California time uh, to help you guys complete your application. So I just put the link for that registration there on the chat one more time. Uh, go ahead and sign up and I will send you a, an email reminder at some point tomorrow morning once uh, you know the day gets going and uh, join me on Zoom. You know, you can join me for the entire hour if you have it. You can only join me for 15 minutes, really whatever you can do that, that will work with me and my time. And really it's just an opportunity for us to connect, to answer any questions that you may have. And um, I can help you go through the application experience. I can read your reflection questions. Um, I can tell you if the school that you're thinking about attending is uh, eligible. Really, whatever questions you have tomorrow is a great opportunity for us to connect and work on your application one on one. So I really hope to see you guys there tomorrow. And, and I complete, completely forgot to give Juan an, an additional shout out. Not only is, is he, him and his team really excellent, but he is most recently from Humboldt. Oh, that's uh, right. So, <laughs> He has been serving uh, a lot of uh, our great uh, native California uh, students already and then came to the college fund. So we're, we're even more excited to have him as our scholarships manager this year because he's been working with so many students already you know, up in the northern part of the state. So just want to call that out. That he's, uh, he's very thanks. familiar with, with a lot <laughs> of our audiences. Yeah, yeah, thanks, I appreciate that. You know, I actually grew up in the Bay Area and Humboldt was the place that you know, that was my calling right after high school. And so I went to Humboldt and I actually, um, so I completed my undergraduate degree at Humboldt and I actually returned to Humboldt uh, to work in financial aid. Uh, and that's where I was for the last two years before I came aboard with the college fund. Um, so I'm super excited to be here and to be reconnecting back with those roots. Um, but I have a really strong knowledge of the, the UC system, the CSU system and the community college system in California. So like I said, tomorrow, you guys, if you have questions regarding any colleges that you're thinking about applying and you want to know if that college would be eligible, feel free to join me tomorrow uh, at two o'clock California time and I can help you with any of those questions that you might have. Yeah, that's, that's a really great additional resource for any of you who have questions maybe outside of even our application. I know that Juan knows also the financial aid system Frontwards and backwards. So if you have questions about that too, I'm sure you can answer your questions. Uh, one thing that I wanted to note too is uh, Juan talked about the awarding of the scholarship, but I want to talk to you about how, a little more specifics about how that's awarded. For one, the application that's open right now from February 1st to May 31st, like I said, that is for the next school year, for the 2022-2023 school year. And when we award, we award for the entire school year. You must be planning to be a full-time student for the entire upcoming school year. Juan said that the, that the, the, the scholarship amount is awarded but semester by semester, but this is the only time that we award for next year. We don't have another application that opens for the fall or next spring. This is your opportunity to apply for funds for the next school year, for that 2022-2023 school year. So be sure that you get your application in, in now. Don't think that's going to open again later in the calendar year for you know, the spring semester. That's not going to happen. So be sure that you get that in and that you ask any questions that you have so that you can get that application in. We had a few questions about the gift cards. Uh, I know that Ben had put the... the, um, the um, the link for the survey in there. Just to repeat that, as long as you fill out that survey and you apply for the Great Oak Future Leaders Scholarship, you will receive one of those gift cards. We can send that electronically. I know several people asked about if we could send that out by email if you don't have a, uh, a physical address. It's actually easier for us to do it that way. So, uh, but we really would encourage you to apply and that's why we're offering this special gift. And like I said, we have more money <laughs> for this upcoming cycle. It was really great news that we heard uh, when we got a check uh, from our funder. For those of you who aren't aware, uh, this scholarship opportunity is funded by uh, the Pechanga tribe uh, and in Southern California, a lot of that money is coming from gaming. But 
there's a lot of funds there to support you in your journeys. As you saw from, from Tori's video, the, the weight that that takes off of you in your college process is really transformational. You're not having to worry about working a job or what your expenses are or things of that nature. I can tell you this for sure, our, our, our Great Oak Future Leader scholars who attended a tribal college, they were able to make that money go so much further uh, than those who are in the UC system or staying in California. So don't limit yourself just to those who are attending school just in California. Consider our tribal college network, consider you know, all those other great uh, state schools and schools in other states, because as long as it's a nonprofit accredited institution, which most schools are, you, you're set you know, for, for using those funds when, once they're awarded. Yeah, definitely. Um, let me, I want to take a question here that just popped up in the chat. That's such a good question from uh, Anna Ceballos. So the question reads, what if uh, in 22, 23, I would be an undergraduate and then the following semester, I would become a graduate student. Would it be two different amounts, right? So maybe you are about to enter your last semester in college and you're going to be graduating in the fall. And then you might move on to a graduate degree in the spring. So the intent is that we would award you for the full academic year, but at the beginning of every semester, we conduct a verification and we can make any adjustments at that point if needed, right? So what is really important for you to keep in mind is that you have to communicate with us actively once you are awarded, and you can do that via email, you can, you can call us, uh, you can email my team directly. Um, I'm hoping that we'll be able to do some of this communication via the portal too as well. Uh, for the next academic year um, but we we can definitely accommodate any growth that happens uh, for you uh, what's really important is that you uh, complete the application by may 31st uh, or by march, march 30th really uh, so you can get that that scholarship or not scholarship that gift card um, and once you are awarded we'll, we'll work with you to understand if we have to make any adjustments for the spring semester um, so we can we can accommodate that if need be uh, but the expectation is that you're going to be a full-time enrolled student both fall and spring because we'll be awarding you for the full academic year so it's really important that you take the time now to submit this application you would not believe how many students we work with every day that email us and that call us and say hey we missed the application deadline can we please still apply you know and that really is going to limit your ability to get more money for school to pursue your academic dreams and really to lower um, the amount of debt of debt that you're going to be taking on um, as you um, pursue what's next for you, you know, scholarship money is free money. You don't have to pay any of this money back. And because we don't require uh, financial need, you can stack your Pell Grant on top of that. You can start, you can stack your Cal Grant on top of that. If you are working on campus part time and you're getting federal uh, work study funds, you can stack that on top of that. So you know, if you if you are going before I came on board with the college fund, uh, when I was in financial aid, I actually processed a couple of uh, of Pachanga awards of the Great Oaks awards at Humboldt, and um, you know the cost of attendance at Humboldt is about twenty three thousand dollars per year, and Great Oaks co covered twenty uh, covered fifteen thousand of that twenty three thousand, so it's a good amount, and most of the students qualified for Pell Grant, which was a, which was another seven thousand dollars on top of that. And they had a part-time job. And so many of those folks were going to school for free. They did not pay a cent to pursue their bachelor's degree. And they were able to uh, work part-time and develop professional skills and put a little bit of money in savings to prepare for graduate school and different things like that. So this is a great opportunity to get free funding to go to college. So I really want you all to take advantage of this. Um, I, I saw a question here about sharing this scholarship opportunity with others. We want you to share this with anyone you think could be eligible. One of the things this, that's great about this program, because it's relatively new, is we're still working on getting the word out, raising awareness of this within the state and within tribal communities. So we haven't had as many you know, applicants for this particular opportunity as we have like for our main full circle scholarship program, which has been around for decades. So please share this with other people. Uh, one thing I do wanna note is that we will, if you've registered or been in this event, we're gonna be sending you an email uh, probably tomorrow or Friday that will have a recording of this event so you can go back and watch it. Actually, if you go to that main college, uh, the California scholarship uh, page right now, you'll see a recording 
of this event from last year. So <laughs> we'll actually be replacing that with this recording of this event. So you can go back, listen to the answers to questions, take down some of those links and things of that nature. And then also in that email, we'll have links to the survey uh, and to some of those other resources that some of you are asking for. Uh, like I said, to get that gift card, all you have to do is fill out that survey and have attended this event tonight, as long as you apply but by March 30th uh, for the Great Oak Future Leaders Scholarship, we will send you that $20 gift card. Because we really want more students to apply and get this really great funding. Like, like Juan said, the, the difference that it makes for you is huge. But let me, let me just give you an example here too, because we get a lot of questions about this. What can you use your money for? Well, we don't put limits on what you can use your money for. Now, I know in the UC system, because we actually do send the funds to the schools, some of them uh, limit a little bit more what funds can be used for, but we at the college fund don't limit that. So I know that students who have attended other schools, they've used it to fix their car. They've used it to pay for childcare. They've used it for a lot of other things that makes their educational journey possible. So we don't put any limits on that. So just think about that and the difference that that can make. Also, with those other resources that we mentioned, like uh, our newsletters, we have an additional scholarships page on our page that sends you to other scholarships. This, this specific opportunity, the Great Oak Future Leaders Scholarship, is a very generous opportunity. It provides a lot of funding. But if you needed more funding, or if you were in a program that maybe it doesn't cover the cost, we want you to be able to find the funding that you need to cover your education. We don't want you to have huge loans that you have to pay back or, or be in some sort of you know, debt situation. So we connect you with a lot of other opportunities that are out there, whether that's through, you know, like Juan said, through grants, you know, helping you to complete the FAFSA, but we're also connecting you with a lot of other scholarships for native students, for BIPOC students, uh, for students in specific fields. I know that in our last newsletter, we had um, opportunities specifically for those who are uh, seeking agriculture or lumber opportunities in tech, in journalism. There's so many different opportunities that are out there. We want to help you to find the funding that you need, even if it's not all from us. We don't want, us, we don't want the, the college fund to be your one-stop shop for all of your education needs. We want to support you. So that's the reason we help connect you with other opportunities. Yeah, and that's what I love so much about the college fund is, is that we provide that holistic support and we provide connections and we provide growth for you uh, throughout your uh, educational journey. I wanted to just take a second and address uh, Thomas uh, Thomas's question. Uh, he asked, um, if I'm a continuing student, can I be eligible for the rest of my uh, course years? So let's say that you're currently um, a, a college, uh, a freshman in college or um, a, a sophomore in college, you are eligible to apply for next year as long as you plan to be enrolled full time fall and spring, as long as you are either an enrolled tribal member or a descendant of one, and you meet uh, the other eligibility points, having a minimum, uh, a minimum cumulative GPA of 2.0, uh, you are a US citizen and all those different things. So in order to be eligible, you don't have to be uh, entering the college system in the fall. Uh, you can be a current college student and you can just gain this new award uh, for next year. And um, our awards, this is important to know, our awards do not renew automatically. Uh, so you will have to come back and do a refresh or your application year to year so that you are considered for uh, a new scholarship award um, every year. So it's not an automatic renewal, but the renewal process is fairly straightforward. Um, and uh, you do receive some degree of priority when you are being renewed. Uh, compared to a new applicant per se. Um, so that's important to note, but yeah, if you if you are planning to attend full time uh, in the fall and spring to an accredited university that is not for profit and you are an enrolled tribal member or a descendant and your cumulative GPA is uh, at least 2.0, please apply, uh, submit your application as soon as you can, definitely by before March 30th, so you can take advantage of this awesome $20 gift card. And uh, I'm gonna do one last plug that I've got here for tomorrow's event. Uh, I just put that link in the chat right there. Tomorrow at 2 p.m. California time, I am gonna be on Zoom. Uh, I'm just gonna be hanging out just like I am right now. 
Um, but it's going to be a very informal conversation between you and I, and I'll be helping you complete the application. I'll be helping you um, answer your eligibility questions. Uh, I can proofread your uh, essay responses, and I can give you feedback on those to make them stronger, to make sure that you are addressing the prompt, and to make sure that your application is going to receive a high score so that you prioritize once, uh, you, um, once we get to the awarding part of our process here internally. Well, I'm not seeing um, any other questions about the scholarship. If Ben, if you could put in the survey link one more time, I had some people, some more people asking about that. Um, and uh, we will also send out that survey link with our follow-up email. So as long as you registered uh, for this uh, event online, which all of you did, of course, uh, we will also send you that survey link. All you have to do is fill out that survey and then apply for the Great Oak Future Leaders Scholarship, and you will receive that $20 gift card. I think we'll probably be sending that by email since we've had so many people ask. So at the end of that survey, if it asks for your mailing address, feel free to, to put your email address in there instead. Just be sure it's correct <laughs> so that you can receive it and that we have your full name because that's how we will verify that you have applied uh, for the Great Oak Future Leaders Scholarship. So. I'm going to wrap us up. Uh, it's been almost an hour. We've, we've answered some great questions. Like I said, this recording will be available uh, after this event, probably tomorrow or the next day. We'll send out a copy of that recording. It will also be on that main scholarship page, which is collegefund.org forward slash California. Let me uh, go ahead and stop my share here. <laughs> uh, 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 Juan and I really appreciate all of you who have come. Uh, to learn more about uh, this specific opportunity. We want to help you. We want to help you connect with these you know, critical funds. So feel free to reach out to us, collegefund.org. Uh, our emails uh, and uh, uh, phone numbers are on there if you ever need to reach out to us. And we'll be putting out a lot more information about uh, this opportunity and others through the end of that cycle. So you have until May 31st but be sure to go ahead and get started on preparing your application now. So thank you all very much for attending tonight. We really appreciate your, uh, uh, your interest and we wanna support you. So thank you and have a good night. Bye everybody, thanks for being here tonight.